Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is uh, Anastasia Tararikova, and I'm a general oncologist from the federal oncology setting named after Blachin in Moscow. For 15 minutes, I will talk briefly about angiosarcoma morphology, diagnostics, and most important uh, treatment strategy. Sarcoma is a rare heterogenic malignancy of mesenchymal origin, which is uh, below 1% of all the malignancies in adults and a little bit more in children. First, it was in, in Russia for 2017, it was over 3,000 3, 3, cases. It's 4% of all the sarcoma in the United States. Uh, prevalence is approximately 1 per 1 million and below 200 new cases uh, a year. In Russian Federation at the moment, we don't have the data, epidemiology data. For certain uh, reasons, we have a growth in uh, the angiosarcoma rate at the moment. Uh, it's not clear whether it is really true or not. As it was demonstrated that there is a trend to the, towards growth, the trend is potentially related to uh, uh, RT treatment of angiosarcoma. I should say that cancer agents in visceral tumors accounts for 25 percent. So generally speaking, it's more frequently it more frequently occurs in adults or in adolescents. Angiosarcoma is related to lymph node impairment and distant metastasis. In many studies, it was reported number of disseminated sarcomas. It varies from 16 to 44 percent. The prognosis is unfavorable. Overall, five-year survival ranges between 30 and 40 percent. Classification is based upon major uh, developmental factors, and it's subdivided into primary and secondary. Primary and secondary is the prognosis of uh, sarcomas is unfavorable, and it's approximately seven months. There are certain works that, that verify that the tumor uh, behavior can uh, uh, depend on the primary localization and the predictors at the moment um, are uh, under research. The disease uh, is endothelial in origin, but the tumor that occurs in the uh, major vessels and the heart are very rare. Angiosarcomas are spontaneous, but there are several publications about malignization and transformation in the frameworks of previously uh, benign impairment uh, lesions. There are several risk factors. This is hepastasis, chronic uh, hepastasis of any origin related to the angiosarcoma, for example, the, uh, uh, the uh, Stuart Travis syndrome. Also, some of the uh, works show BRCA1 and 2 mutations after uh, breast cancer treatment, uh, neurofibromatosis, these uh, syndrome, system should, uh, symptoms should take, uh, be taken into account also. There are different cancerogens that uh, should be taken into account. Angiosarcoma is associated with some um, alien bodies, for example, surgical uh, tissue or vascular prosthesis. Also, uh, pathogenesis is not fully discovered, but there are certain uh, cases of uh, angiosarcomas among patients with uh, expression of bone transplants and also HIV associated angiosarcomas histology. Their uh, histology is variable, even within one case. Morphology can have subtle differences, and they can, uh, it, it can be difficult to know apart from the vascular tumor and by for, um, for, for instance, uh, endoscopy, it is not enough. They can be, the cells can be spindle cells, they can be roundish and epithelioid type. For IHC, um, endothelial markers uh, are show expression. As it is the telial uh, type of tumor, uh, angi angiogenesis should be taken into account because it is related to pathogenesis and how they can be used as targets for treatment. In cytogenetic analysis, there is a wide spectrum of chromosomal and abnormalities, but none of them is specific for angiosarcomas. 
Uh, the, it is usually localized in the head and neck, it's a scalp and the neck, most frequently with multifocal impairment. The angiosarcoma of Wilson Johnson, the uh, most frequently occurs in aged patients. This is hematoma uh, or some ulcification. Early stage uh, shows uh, uh, something like benign uh, or skin, um, just skin impairment. And um, of, uh, angiosarcoma of the brain is very rare. Un uh, soft tissue angiosarcoma is a wide term, wide concept. And it envisages, first of all, absence of uh, solid origin, including uh, soft tissue of the peritoneum, uh, abdominal area, and mediastinum. And also, it could be they are uh, palpable and very fast growing malformation. Most frequently, it occurs in patients at the, uh, at the age of. Uh, 60 and uh, over. Angiosarcoma of the breast. Uh, the primary tumor is very rare. Uh, we don't know the etiology. Uh, approximately 0.04% uh, and approximately 8% among the uh, breast sarcomas. And uh, I should say that it's uh, quite aggressive. The secondary one is the result of RT. Approximately three to five, five to six years are post treatment. Uh, and uh, chronic metastasis or remote metastasis are also risk factors. The local uh, relapse is an unpleasant prognostic factor. Angiosarcoma of the heart and the uh, pulmonary arteries. This is most prevalent in the deep diagnosis and it occurs in 10 to 15 percent on primary malformations. In 80 percent, it is localized in the right ventricle. In, in, in the um, right. Uh, the prognosis is very unfavorable, and the palliative say the reductive surgery or radiation therapy can impact overall survival of patients. Other localizations include liver, spleen, bones, which can occur in one or two percent of male patients and uh, associated with unfavorable prognosis as well. So the angiosarcomas, uh, in terms of treatment, overall strategy includes uh, guidelines of ESMO and CCN, uh, take into account the, uh, whether it is advanced, uh, the uh, medical history as well as localization. If it is localized, then radical surgery is the main method of treatment. If it is high risk uh, of local relapse and remote metastasis, then it's adjuvant and no adjuvant treatment, uh, as well as radiotherapy. No adjuvant chemotherapy can be uh, looked at uh, in order to reduce the tumor uh, volume. And at the moment, we don't have the data of the best possible treatment, but we should take into account the uh, subtype of angiosarcoma. This could uh, allow you to uh, choose better treatment. But Retaxel in uh, adult and aged patients is good enough. If you take into account the uh, risk of metastasis, no adjuvant treatment uh, or chemotherapy can be uh, applied. For example, in 55 uh, patients in Japan, combined treatment, chemotherapy plus RT or without, was related to better outcomes or better prognosis. But for optimal uh, choice of treatment, we need RCTs and bigger sampling of patients. Uh, cytotoxic cytotoxic uh, chemotherapy is uh, one of the basic methods. Tretacycline, uh, taxane, and gemcetamine uh, is used. A lot of patients, I mean, aged, are aged, so that's why we should take into account comorbidities and uh, the risk of toxicity, which allows us to uh, bring down the pharmaco, uh, or reduce the pharmaco treatments. This is our experience, patients with angiosarcoma, 
who were on gemcetabine and Duxel. Uh, in two cases, there were no remote relapses or remote uh, metastasis. The disease control was achieved in over 80% of cases and also partially in 20%. Overall median is 16 months and relapse-free median is 7.5 months. In one case, in locally advanced cancer, it was breast sarcoma. We uh, uh, made it resectable and there was also the potential of gene molecules and we received quite good uh, results of uh, and we also should mention that the angiogenic therapy uh, is limited for patients because of the adverse events and the, uh, as these are aged patients so we still continue the search of effective and optimal uh, drug this is one of the uh, studies uh, 2020 on the combination of platetoxel with uh, uh, this work was performed in the United States and what is the idea of this particular study? This is a drug which is oral. So, this experience was demonstrated in breast cancer treatment. So what are the results of systemic treatment of um, angiosarcoma of the skin, just to compare? As the first line of treatment, we looked into Paxetaxel, uh, which showed two months uh, relapse-free survival. And just to uh, compare it with Pevexizumab, uh, you can see that relapse-free relapse survival was increased by 3%. Now you can see the response rate of 26% and the median of survival, progression-free survival, is three months. Overall survival of nine, nine months. Bevacizumab in RCT phase two. In two cases, out of 23 patients, we uh, achieved partial response and uh, also stabilization in two cases. There are also uh, certain uh, publications on propranadol um, uh, plus uh, and uh, also regulin in certain uh, studies was looked at. Also, we have an experience of uh, checkpoint inhibitors. So, coming back to this particular study, uh, we can see that the full uh, response was marked in six cases out of 23, partial response 22%, and stabilization of disease 50%. Relapse-free survival is, uh, the median is 36 weeks, overall survival at 92% at uh, 52 weeks, which is quite impressive if compared to the data which we already have. And uh, what are the preliminary results? You can see that uh, uh, you can see that we have pre uh, ongoing studies. Uh, you can see the initial data here: first week, uh, baseline, first week, and second week, and we can see response to treatment uh, gradually. Uh, some patients were subject to surgery; others uh, mm, continued uh, just stop treatment because uh, they developed neutropenia, and one patient uh, also um, died because of heart failure. At the moment, this um, uh, company uh, is about to submit the data to FDA. We um, were waiting for this uh, regimen uh, to be registered in 2021. Uh, up to now, we don't have it. Now, understanding the factors of immune environment is very important for the to understand the uh, uh, therapeutic uh, opportunities. One of the publications of 2020, uh, 2019, uh, the authors show complex analysis of uh, different targets, including the immune therapy for patients with angiosarcoma. 143 cases of angiosarcoma were included uh, from uh, 2015 to 2019. NGS was performed. Um, to uh, search 592 oncoast associated genes in the tumor sample. Also, 
uh, WTS, WTS was uh, performed, angiosarcoma of the head and neck had the best outcomes and the uh, highest markers of immune therapy response. Subsequently, the further prospective cl clinical trials in the head and neck are quite verified. Overall, the results of this uh, study, uh, as well as the result of uh, comparison with the deep uh, biology. Now, the, uh, if we speak about ROT1 and ITRX, um, these are the, the, the most um, prevalent pathogenic mutations, and uh, I should say that conclusions. I should say that the existing variant of angiosarcoma treatment is quite limited, especially in radio-induced angiosarcoma. Surgical treatment is the main treatment modality. Chemotherapy and disseminated angiosarcomas are um, complicated with uh, toxicity uh, because of the advanced stage of patients, the targeted and uh, partial angiogenic immune therapy. Uh, this is our further prospect, uh, prospect for treatment with, uh, for patients with angiosarcoma and also, indeed, to choose optimal treatment modality we need con to continue RCTs and uh, that should be uh, based upon the uh, very detailed analysis of data for this disease. Thank you very much for your attention.